Donald Trump may have another challenger, and it's a Republican, a name you've probably heard, South Carolina governor and congressman Mark Sanford, who's here right now. He's considering taking on Trump. He's no stranger to feuding with the president. Trump actually helped dislodge him from office after endorsing his primary challenger and alluding to his past personal problems. He's also poised for a political fight and has been a vocal critic. Somebody's got to stop Trump. I think it is dangerous for our republic. There is no seeming consequence to the president and lies. He came to this chamber, sent a chilling message to my colleagues, which is, if you mess with me, I'll mess with you. Mark Sanford, thanks for coming on the beat. My pleasure. Thanks if, for having me. If you challenge Donald Trump in a Republican primary, what is your argument against him? My argument against him, my chief argument against him, would be that um, he's, in essence, led the Republican Party off to the sidelines as it relates to the way that we spend money. I mean, not so many months ago, Republicans would have been going nuts at the budget deal that's now being contemplated. You really don't hear a peep from Republicans. Uh, this idea of financial realism or financial conservatism used to be a hallmark of the Republican Party. Sure. He has said himself that I'm the king of debt. It's something that doesn't bother me. The problem is he always had his daddy to bail him out when he got into trouble. We do not have that luxury as Americans, and we are in a profound mathematic problem. If you look at the deficits that we're running, you look at the accumulated size of the debt that we have now. And you look at the spending that's in place. And so I think yep. as a Republican, we need to have a conversation as Republicans about what do we believe? Do we believe what we used to say about well, fiscal that's, conservatism? That's what I want to ask you about. And, your, your point here yeah. uh, is in line with the economic facts. Uh, and I've had Trump officials on this show and talked uh, to them and pressed them with the rising deficits, the type of spending they're doing that they were so critical of when Obama did it. But does that mean that your campaign rises or falls on whether the Trump base has been consistent about its beliefs or whether everything goes out the window because it wasn't ever about the deficit? Well, my, my belief is, I mean, you have to remember, Ari, I've, I've been in politics both as a two-term governor and really, you know, 12 years in the United States House of Representatives. I bet I've had thousands upon thousands of different meetings with folks at the grassroots level. And so I don't think that their belief system, that small business person that I've talked to, that soccer mom trying to get their kids to and from uh, soccer practice, whatever the case might be, you think about those people that make up the Republican Party, I don't think their belief system has disappeared. I do think that leadership from Washington has disappeared on this front, and that's what I'm exploring over these 30 days as to whether go versus no go. What do you know from, as you mentioned, your longtime service as a pretty conservative Republican, your time in the House? If you're going to take him on, uh, you know, he doesn't hold back. You know that about him. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to hold back? I, or I think you... that's an understatement. I mean, the idea well, of being a human pinata doesn't you know. have a whole lot of appeal. <laughs> but, but so, the, so let me, the let, let me let me tell you where I'm going yeah. with this. Are you yeah. going to uncork and let everyone know everything you know about what the Republican caucus really thinks, about what Paul Ryan really thought of him back in the day, about what Lindsey Graham really says behind closed doors? Is it one of your greatest assets, your ability to take us into those secret cloakrooms where we hear all these hints and rumors and leaks that maybe some of these Republicans don't even actually abide by what Donald Trump does? Is, is that going to be something that's off or I, off I, limits I for you? I think to your general point, I think to your general point, there is something of a conspiracy of silence on that front, but some of it's already been exposed. I mean, I think that Tim Alberta just did an interesting write-up on, on Paul Ryan and what he believed. But by interviewing people like then. you, someone had to tell Tim the stories. Yeah, um, I, I didn't. I wasn't a part of that particular piece, but I think it was rather revealing on what Paul Ryan really thought about President Trump. So and let me his ask you this: dealings. We talked economics in your story yeah. before. Before I let you go and toss to Hardball. Uh, do you think that more people in the Republican caucus in Congress are concerned about Donald Trump's management, the chaos and the race baiting? Or do you think they're actually secretly fine with all of it? I don't think they're fine with that. But again, I want to go back to the core of what I'm trying to get to the bottom of over these 30 days, which is I particularly don't think they're fine with the way in which Washington is spending their money these days. Anything else we should know before I let you go? I got 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Yes, sir. Uh, what I'd say is we're walking our way toward the most predictable financial crisis in the history of man, and it will impact every one of us uh, and our hopes and dreams for our kids if we don't get this thing right.
Mark Sanford, uh, considering a run from the deficit right of Donald Trump, governor, a congressman, thanks for coming on the beat. My pleasure. Take you, good care. Yes, sir. And if you jump in the primary, we'll, we'll be sure to have you back. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.